For this project, I'm going to show you how to make a water balloon slingshot that will give you power and prestige while defending and dominating your next water fight. This sling bow will lob water bombs over 150 feet away and wreak havoc on friends and family. Not to mention, it will shoot up to three balloons at a time. Let's start this project with a trip to the hardware store for half-inch PVC tubing and a handful of sprinkler fittings. These adapters are all pretty standard and you should be able to find them at a home improvement or sprinkler supply outlet near you. I went ahead and cut the tubing into 1 and 3 quarter inch, 2 inch, 5 inch and 10 inch pieces so we can jump right in and get busy connecting them all together. Now just like any PVC project, it's a really good idea to dry fit everything together just to make sure all the pieces are going to fit before you glue them together. And it's a good idea to practice putting an angle on the bow forks first by propping the handle on a small box, then simply pushing the prongs down on either side until they touch the table. This will angle both sides symmetrically without the need for any precision instruments. The basic frame for your sling bow should look something like this, and if it does, then the next step is to cement it together so it can take some abuse. To make my connections, I'm using a fast set cement because it's lightning fast when it sets and doesn't require a primer to clean the connections first. However, it's really important to follow the directions on the back to make sure your connections are as strong as possible because you don't want your bow breaking under pressure. Cement it together one connection at a time and be prepared to work quickly because once two pieces touch, you only have about five seconds to get them into place before they lock up and won't move anymore. That's why using a box to help set the angle can make all the difference in whether you get them into position with enough time to spare. Now you can see I glued all the pieces together except for the two inside tubes and that's important. We'll glue these together in a minute, but for now make sure to keep them separate. In the meantime, let's take our bow frame to the next level with a couple cans of spray paint. Of course I colored mine black and yellow, but you can paint yours any color you want. Or even use duct tape to make a quick and easy custom wrap like we did for the laser blowgun. You'll see how to make this in another project video. Okay, now that we've got our custom colors, we're ready to add the sling. I found a 50 inch workout band in the sporting goods section of a local super center and coincidentally it's black and yellow as well which matches my color scheme perfectly. These bands have a handle at either end which we won't actually need so go ahead and chop them off with a pair of scissors but don't throw them away just yet. Let's salvage the padded foam handles and repurpose them for our sling bow instead. Cut the strap off the handles and carefully pull the padding off so you're left with just the foam exteriors. Twist them onto the outside of the half inch PVC pipe and you should find they make a perfect fit and stretch the entire length of the tubes. Now before we glue the handles back onto the frame, we actually need to roll the ends of the foam down a little so they're out of the way. Both sides should be folded back so there's enough space to glue the ends without any glue touching the foam. If there is, then go ahead and apply the cement to the connections and twist them together like you did the others. Do the same thing with all four connections and give it about two minutes for the cement to begin curing. Then unroll the ends of the foam so they overlap part of the PVC T, which you can see gives us a nice handle grip. With the padded foam handles in place, the frame is finished and looking good. So let's move on to making the sling next. We need a way to join the two ends of the rubber tubing together and I found a really effective way to do that is with a disposable pen. Take the pen apart and cut two to three inches off the tube, then carefully use one of the blades on your scissors to score angled markings down the sides. Do this as many times as you can on both ends, making sure the plastic is scored at about a 45 degree angle away from the tips. Now it's going to take a bit of effort, but you need to push half of the pen inside the tubing, so apply some pressure and wiggle it around, and eventually it'll slide into place. Push the other end of the tubing on the same way until both pieces butt up next to each other and become one. It should be hard to tell where they join, and if you pull them apart as hard as you can, the grooves in the pen should lock onto the rubber and prevent the joint from coming apart. Alright, now that we've got an enormous homemade rubber band, it's time to make the launching pouch and all we need for that is a roll of duct tape. Most duct tape is 2 inches wide and we need 4 strips cut around 18 inches long. While you're here, cut 4 more strips about 14 inches as well. Carefully overlap the longer strips just a bit and press them together so you can effectively double the width of the tape. If you do that with all 4 pieces, you should end up with a nice large piece of duct tape fabric with a sticky side facing up. Now just for convenience, I marked the tape so you can see where everything will get attached, and if you center two of the 14 inch strips facing down and press them into place, you should be left with 4 inches exposed in the center and 5 inches on the sides. Carefully wrap the tape around to the back side and press it smooth, but keep the two black strips facing upward because we'll need them for attaching this to the tubing next. Now bring back the big rubber band and stretch it sideways so the bands lay exactly on top of the black strips and double check that the pen tube connection is in the center. Fold one side of the material over the tube and press the sticky side down so it adheres to the inner pad, then smooth the tape until it's flat. The other side gets folded over next and smoothed down as well the same way. Alright, the pouch is nearly done and you can see how this design lets it slide freely up and down the band, making it easily adjustable. 
The only thing our launcher needs now is a handle. Grab the last two strips of duct tape and fold one of the strips lengthwise into thirds, then wrap the other piece of tape around it to make it even stronger. Now cut two slits in the center of the pouch about two inches from either end so you can weave the strap through both of the holes. And when you pull it flat, it should look like this. Trim the ends of the straps so that when you fold them in toward the middle, they meet the edge of the handle in the center. Surprisingly, all it takes to hold them securely in place is a five inch strip of tape. So just lay one over top and press it down smooth. Our launcher is finished and looking good, so let's go ahead and attach it to the bow. Start by lining the ends of the tubing up with the grooves and the tips of the bow, then double check that the tubing is symmetrical with the pouch exactly in the center. Grab one side and stretch the rubber down as hard as you can, rocking it back and forth so it slips inside the groove, then use something like a 4 inch cable strap to pinch the tubes tightly together at the bottom. Now simply cut the ends off the zip ties, making sure they're smooth, and double check the rubber is held firmly in the grooves at the tip. If they are, then you're done and ready for action. I thought it'd be fun to test my Sky Blaster slingshot on a recent camping trip with some friends and family. If you look closely at the pouch when it gets pulled back, you'll see it automatically cups itself, which means it'll grip onto balls or water balloons securely until they're released. Just for fun, I loaded up a bucket with over 100 water balloons ready for blasting so we could have some fun and test it out. The slingshot gets loaded by placing a water balloon in the pouch while it's facing upward. Pull back to lock onto it, then fire when ready. With only a bit of effort, you'll be able to send balloons soaring high into the sky and up to 150 feet away. To get the best leverage, try shooting it like a bow, and as you practice, your shots can get incredibly powerful and impressively accurate as well. I tried going for distance, and you can see this one landed 168 feet away, and I'm confident that some of you will get them even farther than that. If you want even more power, try laying on your back and resting your feet on the prongs to send your payload even further. Now depending on what kind of resistance bands you get, you'll be able to make sling bows any custom color scheme you want. And what's really cool is you can make as many as you want for around 10 bucks each. But check this out. I found a box of two slightly shorter resistance tubes for the same price as one long one. Which means you can effectively cut the cost of the rubber in half and make two slingshots for the price of one. And just for fun, I rigged up a duct tape armband that slides down over the frame and holds the contraption tightly to my arm, which prevents the end from kicking out on release. The sling bow will launch up to three balloons simultaneously, but if you're thinking of shooting them at friends or family, there's something you need to know first. The balloons hit hard enough to leave welts, so make sure anyone being used for target practice is okay with it before you open fire. And if you're not in the mood to get anyone wet, try using your sling bow to launch one of the sky balls we made in another project video. You'll see they open up around 40 or 50 feet high in the air and are guaranteed outdoor fun for everyone, so keep an eye out for how to make these sky balls in another video. Well now you know how to convert duct tape and resistance rubber into a powerful water balloon slingshot. And if you don't want to spend money on workout bands, you can always try modifying a bag of rubber bands instead. I quickly braided a hundred of them into a rubber rope that makes an impressively effective and low budget alternative. Well that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. What's up guys? Thanks for watching my video to the end, and if you're ready to get to work building one of these bad boys for yourself, I've got something that might help. I just created a set of high quality, step-by-step -step instructions for this project that you can download instantly, so you'll have a hard copy you can reference while you're building your slingshot. I designed this project PDF to be as user-friendly as possible, with high quality pictures, step-by-step -step instructions, as well as some helpful hints and fun facts to help you on your way. They'll be for sale on my webpage for $10, so just click here on the screen or check the video description for the link on where to get it. And if you get a copy before the end of the month, you'll automatically be entered to win one of the Sky Blaster slingshots from this video. Now to make this an even sweeter deal for you, my subscribers, I put a private link in the description to where you can get this project PDF for only $2.95. That's 60% off and just for you for watching my videos. So there you go. See how you're helping to support me and in return I can keep making more projects and videos for you. By the way, if you download my PDF but don't feel like it was worth your money, I'll give your money back. How about that? So you've got nothing to lose. Click here to get yourself a copy and at least get your name on the list to win a slingshot. Thanks again for supporting me and my projects. I appreciate you and I'll see you around in the next project video. Talk to you then.